Okay, here's yet another video. This is, uh, I think, definitely an optional one, because I, I really am doing something I rarely do, which is pretty much directly paraphrase the book. If, you're, if you like getting things out of books, it's, it won't be that, that different. But I wanted to just justify why is the geometric formula for the dot product That's the algebraic formula equal to the geometric formula. Because I've been claiming that's the whole name of the game. That's why it's interesting. So let's look at the proof of that. It's a good investigation of some very cool things about the dot product. I want to say more good things about the algebraic form. I kind of harp, I kind of harp on the geometric form and talk about it. It's really a geometrical object. But it's a beautiful thing that it has such a nice formula. And it's not just because it's easy to calculate for explicit numbers, it's because it automatically gives it nice algebraic properties. You could actually get pretty far just thinking of it as an algebraic operation and be really happy with it. You'd be missing the geometric story, but it's pretty cool. So in particular, one of the things I've already said is that if I multiply one of the vectors by a scalar, I just look at that formula. And I notice the R comes out as a factor, and what's left is just the dot product again. That kind of looks familiar. That was one of the things, one of the rules we had for like matrices, that if I multiply one of the matrices by, matrices by a scalar, I can pop out that scalar. We kind of describe it as a kind of a, an associative or even a commutative law, because if the R is in here, it doesn't matter. It can be popped out. It's a very specialized kind of law, though. You can't, I don't want to say that there's like an associative law for the dot product, because you can't dot three things together. It doesn't make any sense. Think about, think about why if you, if you want to. Um, so that's one of, the, one of the laws. It also kind of looks like linearity for linear transformations, that scalars come out on front. Well, what was the other thing about linear transformations? And what's another fact um, about multiplication? The distributive law. That's definitely the most interesting thing about multiplication. Well, let's look at this. Let's do it real carefully. That's u. I'm going to expand it out from the inside, just step by step. That's going to be uh, v1 plus, v2 plus w1, v2 plus w2, v3 plus w3. And then that's u1, u2, u3. And so I'm going to get this when I take the dot product. And look what I get. I get three of the same type of thing, exactly something where I can use the distributive law for ordinary real numbers. And now I can package it. I can reorder it and package it back up. There's a u dot v sitting right here. And there's a u dot w sitting right here. And so that's u dot v plus u dot w. Very formal, but nothing hard. And it all came down to the distributive law for real numbers. And so it says that, finally, one thing I never really justified is why should we call this a product? Why is this the product of unity, or one kind of product of two vectors? This is why. This is the reason. If you have something called addition, and then something else distributes over it, it should, be deserve, it should deserve to be called a product. And if it doesn't, you shouldn't be calling it a product. It's a very deep theory involved here. So how are we going to use that? Why is that, why is that so interesting? Okay. It's because it makes the, the proof of this really slick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to think uh, kind of an unexpected thing. I'm going to take two vectors, u and v. And this law does not talk about adding or subtracting vectors. It just says, here's the dot product. It's what it is. But if I just stare at these two vectors forever and just hope something comes out of it, it's not going to happen. I've got to combine the idea of the dot product with something else I know about vectors. This is telling me algebra is really cool, and uh, vector al the, the dot product behaves well with the other algebra operations. I just showed that in terms of addition and scalar multiplication. So we're going to combine it with that. But we want to do it in a geometric way that we understand the geometry too. Here's what we do. We just draw a triangle. We've 
already discovered a long time ago that when I join the heads of two vectors that were already joined at the tails, I'm calculating the, the difference of two vectors. And so now what have I got? I've got algebra and geometry combined. Algebra and geometry because it's a triangle. Okay, and in fact, I know secretly that I'm eventually hoping to get a theta there, but let's not even worry about that quite yet, but secretly I know that I, I expect to use that. Okay, so now, if I just look at the dot product of u with v, or u with u, or v with v, it's not going to get me anywhere. I'm going to take the dot product of u minus v, but with itself. And there's a reason for that. It's because one of the things, oh yeah, I think I just forgot to say, one of the things we know about the dot product, silly, very important um, aside, the basic link ge geometrically, just somehow slipped my mind to include this in all these videos, the basic link is that the dot product of a vector with itself, that is the magnitude of the vector. That's not a hard fact to show. It's just you just write down the formula of the dot product and you recognize the, the magnitude squared. But that's unbelievably important. Okay. And somehow, I think I just assumed that I had already said that. The dot product of a vector with itself is the magnitude of that vector squared. I, I really can't overemphasize how important that is, and I wish I would have said it, said it earlier in the other videos. Um, that is a huge link between algebra and geometry. Because this is a geometric notion, the magnitude of a vector. And so because that's the basic link, I'd like to calculate, I'd like to do this, but in a more interesting case. If I just stare at this for u or for v separately, I'm not going to get anywhere. But here, I can use that fact. Let me squeeze that over here. That's the magnitude of u minus v squared. Hey, that's talking about the length of the side of a triangle. That might be cool. Might have some geometric significance. But here, I can use the distributive law. I can foil it. I can distribute twice. And I get u dot u uh, plus v dot v. Those would be the, the outers. And notice the minus signs cancel. And then I get minus 2u dot v and minus 2v dot u. Well, I'm sorry, minus u dot v, not with the twos, and minus v dot u. And then another very simple fact about the, ge the algebra of the dot product, which I didn't do separately, but it's easy to show, is that those are the same. And you might think, oh, how could they ever be different? Well, guess what? With the cross product that we'll get soon, they will be different. OK, now let's stare at this and see if we've made some progress. I claim we're mostly done. We have proved, we're about to prove a link between the dot product as an algebraic operation and geometry. Because this is a geometric notion. It's the, the length squared of the third side of the triangle. That and that are geometric notions. And there's the dot product ready to isolate. So one fact we can get out of this, if we just isolate everything, that uh, all over, uh, actually, minus that, plus that, all over two. That's kind of unwieldy, though. If that was it, that's, that's a cool fact. It actually, this fact itself actually comes up and is useful in itself. But, um, just checking the time there. But it's a little unwieldy, and it's certainly not this formula. Okay. But I wanted to mention that that already is the key. From here, it's downhill. What we can do, though, is we can look at this form again and look at the, the triangle and say, does this look familiar? Let's just call these, let's just call these, uh, give them a little more familiar names. Let's say that's, that length is A, that length is B, that length is C for that triangle. And then we've got C squared is A squared plus B squared minus 2U dot B. That should look pretty familiar. So I want to emphasize that it was just the distributive law and the symmetry, the commutative law of the dot product, um, that told us that the dot product can be understood purely by looking at the lengths of the three sides of the triangle. Then if we've never, and then even if this wasn't familiar, it'd still be useful. But this is familiar. This is the law of cosine with uh, a, b, cosine theta. 
just ready to be stuck in. And guess what? That's, oh, that's where we saw the product of two sides times the cosine of the angle between them. It was in the law of cosines. Oh, yeah, we should have recognized that. I, I certainly didn't recognize that the first time I saw the dot product. I didn't re realize I'd seen that combination before, just because the notation is so different, and nobody wanted to highlight it. But here it is, highlighted. This is something that's familiar. That is a place we've seen the product of two sides, two, two lengths with the end, cosine of the angle between them. So that tells me that these must match up. That this must be A, of course, which was just a shorthand for the magnitude of U. B was a shorthand for the magnitude of B. And the cosine of the angle between them. So that's one way to show this. It's not the only way to show, but it's, it's the classic way to show it. That you do some algebra, and then you recognize that the law of cosines has suddenly popped out and is staring you in the face. Another way to run the argument in reverse is that it gives us a deeper meaning for the law of cosines. The law of cosines is true because secretly, looking at the lengths of triangles has to do with an operation that foils. And when you foil it out, you get exactly a square, a square, and a cross term with a 2 in it. The minus sign wasn't crucial. You can run the operation with a plus. It's just the picture isn't quite as pretty. Um, I don't want you to think the minus sign was some magical thing. It's just to make uh, the triangle easier to draw. But that's sort of a deeper meaning for the law of cosines. It really is um, the distributive law in disguise.